Hello there and welcome to another video by me, Darren. I'm that Tassie Wargamer. The reason I got the name is I live here in Tasmania and I like wargaming. Anyway, um, it's been quite a few weeks since I've given a, an update, so I thought today I'd just be a great opportunity just to go through what I've been up to, um, show you as much as I can about where I am with, with gaming and, and modelling, as well as I thought I'd do a book review, hence the, the book that's right here in, in front of me. Um, I'm going to get to it a bit later, I think, because what I'll do, I'll, I'm, I'm going to cover first up just anything that's not related to um, Infamy Infamy, and then I'll get into a little bit more detail about how I'm going with um, preparing for the new rule set Infamy Infamy by Two Fat Lardies. So I'll take this book away for a second. Um, the last few weeks, I have finished off my four Schirmjäger for um, Chain of Command, or, or anyone. Um, they're actually downstairs at the moment. Um, they've all been painted, they've all been varnished, uh, they've all been based. Unfortunately, I'm just waiting for a dry day to do the final spray because they it's currently up around 80, 90 degree, uh, 80, 90 percent humidity. I'm waiting for it to drop below 60 so I can make sure that my my final clear uh, final dull coat goes on clear. Um, but they're all done. So I've got a few buildings to paint for chain of command. Um, obviously, I'm not getting any gaming in, so I finally finished off my um, my tokens that I bought that I got from Two Fat Lardies when I bought Chain of Command. Um, I've never bothered painting mine up because we'd been play I've been playing with a mate who always supplied the, the the tokens, so I was never in a big hurry. Um, but they've now done. I've, they're all painted up. No great, no great um, paint job. Just a quick, basically a quick one, and. Uh, and they've now had a, 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 a clear coat on the top. Um, my, sh my sharp practice tokens, I bought these when I got the rules. Uh, they have copped a hammering because we play almost weekly. And what I was finding was that um, I had real problems with MD MDF originally when I put, the, when I put the, 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 the primer on. It took a couple of coats and it actually went lumpy and chunky. Uh, and my good mate um, and uh, gaming buddy, uh, John, swore that he could tell the difference. He could feel the difference between the Tiffin and the others. So I've gone and given them all a sand back. I haven't bothered painting the backs, but the fronts, I gave them all of a sand. Um, these were horror to paint because that paint, nothing wanted to stick to the primer, even after a few coats. Um, so I've given them a tidy up. Uh, nothing nothing beautiful, just enough that, um, that they're going to last. I am going to give them a clear coat as well. Uh, very soon changed the color of the tiffin originally it was always gold it had a like a green almost like a fluorescent green i thought it looked better to look a bit more like a, a coin of some kind so i've just done done that um i actually have ordered a new set of acrylic ones too a little bit smaller um just because they look pretty good they're coming from america i can't remember where they're coming from but as soon as i get them i'll i'll show you um i've been buying a few books some unrelated to uh, uh, to infamy infamy, so I'll quickly go through them now. And some that I actually haven't. Oh, we're going to fit it in. This one is wow, that is huge. Let me pull my camera. Back. <laughs> this is the Great War by Les Carlyon. Um, big, huge, thick book, but for anyone uh, with an interest in Australian. War, uh, Australian Army during World War One. Apparently, this is well. Actually, I think it's all the forces, but mainly about it's uh, following a lot of the Australians. I believe this is a a must read. Apparently, so I'll just put that down there. Haven't read it. Well, there I go. I'm following my camera around instead of leaving it there. Shows you how great a cameraman I am. Uh, picked this one up yesterday for two dollars. The Royal Air Force Illustrated History by Michael Armitage. Again, it was from a um, an op shop, so I'll be getting to that in the near future. This one I picked up for John. Uh, John is a historian and also works at the um, Maritime Museum here in Hobart. So I probably will not get around to reading it, but so I picked it up for him. I'll be handing it over to him next time we we set we meet for a game. And I'm not really sure. Obviously, this is about. Uh, Burma. I'm not really sure, but I thought I might as well pick it up. It was a dollar and got a little bit of, um, I think it's fiction, non-fiction sort of cross, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. I didn't have a great look at it. I thought, yeah, it looks interesting. So I'll be reading that later. 
Now you just remove the stool. I'm just going to put the camera back down, so excuse the wobble. Um, I'll get on to my miniatures. So I've been buying a heap of miniatures. Uh, I think I mentioned in a previous email, uh, sorry, in a previous video about um, I bought the, the Warlord plastic Caesarean Romans. I bought other bits and pieces as well since then. Um, unprimed yet but I managed to get the um, my command my command unit so my centurion um, musician and oh, no that's not the right word and the signifier I believe so they're they're gonna be primed um, I've already done to get me into the into the mood I originally bought um, This one here, this is uh, Pompey, Pompey the Great. Really dynamic figure, and he's come up really well. And now this, I was surprised when I first did the matte coat on this, it looked too glossy. But now the matte coat that I'm using, um, which I've posted in a previous video, it was actually dulled down quite nicely. So I'm really, I'm really liking that. And I hope the rest of the Romans will come up just as good. As you can see here, I've been I bought a box of 24, doing in batches of eight. Those ones there have only been sprayed. These guys here, um, the ones on the left have had have been painted, decal applied, and I've brushed up the red around the decal. These ones here, decal applied, haven't brushed up the red around the decal, so they're gonna look a bit different. Once the decal's dry on, on, on the ones on the right, I will um, I'll probably then go through and do my army painter dark shade on them both, base them up. Um, Cause I'm actually gonna be waiting on a few decals for these guys. I've run a bit short. So for that final unit, I'll be having to um, to wait for the decals. So I might just do these two. Hopefully the decals will arrive ready for infamy infamy. If not, then I can always use those guys mainly painted and finish them off later. Um, also arriving the mail, I got my Germanic archers unopened, unprimed. I'm really going to try to make sure I get through all my Romans before I uh, start on the Germans. Uh, Germanic skirmishes with javelins. And I've gone for the tribesmen of Germania. Um, I know Foundry, from all accounts, do far better miniatures than um, than Hail C uh, sorry, than Warlord games. I've actually been pretty impressed with the Warlord Romans, actually. I I've found them Quite, quite easy to model and glue together, and I found them quite easy and nice, a pleasure to paint. I'm hoping the Germans will be the same. Um, the problem with Foundry, of course, at the moment is that oh, they are more expensive, but also the, the postage to Australia is just, it just, you know, it just makes it unaffordable. So I've gone for plastic at the moment because these guys are available from stores in Australia. <clears throat> Continuing on with the Infamy Infamy theme. Um, well, this one partly, but because it, it covers all different wars and includes some of the German wars. I bought this book a while ago, Geography and History of Warfare, Battlegrounds. Um, there's the other details. Um, not recommended, really. I, I found, even though it talks about on the back, um, really, it really plays up that this book is all about the geography and how geography has played a part in the battles. Sounds great, and that's really why I bought it, because I wanted that different angle. Uh, you read through it, and basically each is a lot, for, for a reasonably thin book, it's not too big, there's a lot of battles, and that should have, again, this was on your cheap one, I, I, uh, just from a, an op shop, but there is a lot, a lot, a lot of battles covered in here. We should have rung alarm bells, I guess, that they're not gonna go into any great detail. Um, and, Really getting into it, there was absolutely nothing, well, not that I read, so I stopped reading about halfway through. Basically, it was a rundown of the battles and any basically any information that I could simply get off Wikipedia. And there was no great detail about the geography and how the geography played a part in those battles. So, interesting title um, that piqued my interest. Really disappointed in the fact that actually it's just a, hist a, a, a basic history of warfare and um, probably more to do, you know, something you might learn about in high school. So disappointed with that one. Um, this one was bought new from my bookstore in here in Hobart, Rome at War, Osprey Games. Uh, no author. 
So, and I, I have read since that it's a compilation of Osprey articles. Um, and I can say I can say that the articles in there are well written, obviously by authors that know their know their stuff. However, <laughs> I think the the person who put it together and compiled it. Um, really poor unfortunately and it was really it was really yeah, it really put a bit of a, a down on it for me um this photo in particular according to the caption here on the left and i'll move away from left to right a hastatus a triarius and a wellis as we know the the velis were the the light armored um skirmishers this is a Veles or Wellis, Wellite, but according to this, because what they've done is they've, they've flipped the, the, the photograph, the, the image around, which really is a big no-no when you're in, surely when you're compiling a book. So anyone who's reading this for the first time, this is going to be quite confusing. Um, secondly, when it gets onto the late Republic, it gets a, I, I know a little bit about, you know, a little bit about history. So lucky for me, I sort of went, mm, that doesn't sound right. But it goes on, um, I won't go into, I can't find it now, and I should have probably put some post-it notes in there. But it talks about Caesar's campaigns, and then it goes on to talk about Marius's campaigns, the Marian reforms. Now, and it didn't actually say this happened before Caesar. So the problem there, of course, is that um, uh, people are going to assume that Caesar came to power and... Then, then, then later, Marius came along and made all the reforms, which isn't accurate. So, some glaring errors, which really, apart from some well-written um, articles, the compilation is really poor. Um, and yeah, it, it's bad because it, it it's an Osprey book. I, I expected more. Um, in contrast, another Osprey book. The Roman Army by Chris McNabb, written by one person, probably compiled by the same person. I highly recommend this book. This was, I learned a lot from this. Like I said, I'm no historian. I'm really just dipping my feet into into ancients. Um, uh, I, I knew probably a, a little bit about everything, but this was fantastic. And just understanding how the armies, how, how things changed through the, through the times. Really enjoyed it. And I'm planning on giving it a second read very soon because I know I'm going to pick up some more as I go. Um, some great illustrations by by Osprey as as we're used to some great maps so you really get an understanding of of how the battles presented um, that same photograph uh, that we saw earlier are actually is in this book with them the right way not that's not it with with them the right way round but yeah easy reading like you think oh you know it, it could be hard reading, but it's not. More importantly, it's got a really one, for me anyway, a really interesting one on siege warfare. Uh, this was $32.99 Australian, UK $16.99, US $27, Canadian $36. If you can get this, highly recommend it. I really enjoyed it. Um, got about a minute and a half left, and I'm still having troubles with trying to get videos longer than 15 minutes because iMovie won't allow me to upload them, even though... Um, YouTube will accept them. So, quite quickly, complete Roman legions. I'm uh, probably a sixth, one sixth of the way through the book. Really enjoying it. Uh, Nigel Pollard, Joanne Berry, really good. Um, I'm getting more. Inf Some of the information is very similar to what I've read, but that's always going to be expected. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It goes into a little bit more detail about the specific legions and where they were and the like. So, I'll have to give another update on this once I'm fully finished with it. But for now, that was, yeah, I'm really enjoying it at the moment. So as you can see, when, when I get into a new era, I really like to um, really like to you know, absorb a lot of the information. So, yeah, so out of all the books I've got so far, two, well, those four, those four I've just showed you, two misses that I wouldn't recommend, um, and two hits, the Roman Army and the Complete Roman Legions. Um, Thames and Hudson, uh, 35 Australian. Can't tell you the price. That would be roughly the same price that I showed you last time. So, um, really excited about Infamy Infamy. We're coming up to 15 minutes now. Um, so, if you, if you want to know more, keep, uh, keep watching, and I'll probably have another video out very soon. Thanks for watching.